Hello everybody, my name is Milan Jelev from Sofia University. I'm currently doing a PhD project over there. Uh, I'm a full-time doctoral student uh, in the Department of Comparative Political Science uh, with uh, my research supervisor, Associate Dr. Tatiana Borodjeva. The topic of my future dissertation is normally European integration of the Western Balkans, uh, which includes Albania, North Macedonia, Serbia and Montenegro. Uh, normally, I've graduated the master's program Policies and Strategies of International Public Affairs in uh, Jean Moulin Lyon III in France. Uh, however, my current uh, article, my current, current topic, which will I present you today, is, is called Economy, the European Union's Instrument of Influence in the Western Balkans. So, uh, let me make a quick introduction. Normally, the economy is an essential part of the processes of enlargement of the European Union. Uh, it's kind of important uh, not only for the countries of the Western Balkans, but also for all the geopolitical uh, strategic players uh, in the whole planet and, of course, uh, uh, in between the, the old continent. Normally, the European Union, that's the creation of the largest single market in the world, which includes a free trade area, single customs policies, uh, policies, free movement of goods, services, and citizens, as well as the single European currency, which is considered as an achievement of the European Union. Um, I currently live in Sofia, Bulgaria, which hasn't, uh, uh, which hasn't already uh, achieved the, the European currency as its official, official money, but still we're planning to do it. Also, the countries from the Western Balkans, I think they're aiming to the same target. Normally, the region had lots of crises uh, in the last 10 years, beginning with the refugee crisis from the war in Syria and the path of migrant flows through Southeast Europe. Then, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which has been uh, real, has made real difficulties towards the, the European integration of the countries of the Western Balkans. However, uh, the the target of the countries from the Western Balkans continue to be entering the European Union as uh, normal member states. So, uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, the European Union has its economic tools for uh, European Union influence in the region uh, as the so-called soft power. The soft power, perhaps you know already the definition, means that without uh, entering in a war, without doing uh, serious, uh, serious uh, sabotages or serious actions. Uh, with the processes of enlargement of the European Union, uh, the whole economic union is trying to integrate uh, new countries, new territories, and of course to profit from that. So uh, one of the tools about uh, which we are going to examine today is the individual reports of the economic reform programs for, uh, for each examined country. Uh, that I have already mentioned. Uh, it would be interesting for you to know that uh, the Europeans of the Western Balkans are kind of distinguished between the European reform programs about Turkey, but still they're from the same same program, same partnership, and it's kind of the part of, uh, even though it's different from the national reform programs and the stability or convergence programs, it is kind of important for the whole region. I think that in Brussels, they take the whole region, Western Balkans, plus Turkey as a whole. Uh, unfortunately, I'm pretty, pretty sure that for, for, uh, for the current situation, Turkey is kind of not very close to entering the European Union. But who knows, perhaps in the next 10 or 15 years, it could always be uh, on the table for negotiations. So uh, a few, few words about the European reform programs. Basically, it's the European Commission that's giving prescriptions to the countries uh, in the Western Balkans and Turkey, of course, uh, who want to, who would like to join and to enter the European Union. So, uh, normally there are political criteria, there are economical criteria for entering the European Union. There are administrative and institutional capacity to implement the so-called acquis communautaire of the European Union. Pardon my French, of course, but in today's uh, lecture, I would just like to look at the uh, 
economic reform programs to make a small comparative research concerning the countries from the Western Balkans, that is without Croatia, who is already an, uh, a country that is a member of the European Union, without Kosovo, which is a small state and not very well developed, and without Bosnia and Herzegovina, of course, who have lots of integration problems for, for the current situation. Now, uh, I would uh, like to say that the economic reform programs, they are part of a big uh, economic and investment plan for the Western Balkans. Normally, uh, there, are, uh, there are six points that should be considered as a whole, who have uh, 10 flagships. I would just like to mention, by, mention them real quick. That's sustainable transport, connecting east to west, connecting north to south, connecting the coastal regions, clean energy, that is renewable energy, transition from coal and renovation wave, uh, another priority, environment and climate, which includes the flagship seven, waste and wastewater management, of course, the digital future, which includes digital infrastructure, the human capital, which is important for young people as me, which includes the youth guarantee, the, the thinking about the future, and of course, uh, last but not least, the private sector with the flagship nine, investing the competitiveness of the private sector. So uh, afterwards, I would try to suggest a few comparative research about four countries from the Western Balkans. That is Albania, Northern Macedonia, Serbia and Montenegro. And uh, if you're curious, why are they uh, in this order, that's because uh, in my original article, which was in Bulgarian language, I have used the alphabetical order on the same way. So uh, let's let's begin, shall we? When you speak about the annual reports of the countries, there are fiscal policies, short-term fiscal structural reforms, investigation of corruption, of course, reforms about the energy sources. We're speaking a lot about ecology, about the clean water fighting uh, uh, inflation is always uh, nothing, nothing new. You can check that in my full article. So let's begin with Albania. What I would like to, to see in the annual reports of Albania is that uh, I've got, uh, that's, that's the, the thing I've done in, uh, in, in the whole of the countries. I would like to check a few of the bullet points from the year from the uh, annual report on Albania concerning uh, their, uh, the same points that are actually quite the same for two consecutive years, which uh, for, uh, for some logic means that something is, not, see, something is not right, not only in Albania, of course, but uh, in the European Commission as well. So uh, I would like to mention the development of a plan to guarantee the realization of young people up to 30 years of age which is quite actual for the report uh, two years ago, for 2021 report on Albania. And then we can see quite the same thing on the 2022 uh, European Reform Program report on Albania. The finalization and implementation of the plan to guarantee the realization of young people up to 30 years of age. As you can see, I'm quite pretty sure there hasn't been much reforms in Albania, even though the government has done its best. It's the European Commission that's doing it a bit of bureaucratic methods to, to influence the country to make some reforms. But frankly, do you really believe that the developed plan has already been implemented? It just uh, has to start working, you know, and that would just uh, resolve the problems of the young people in Albania. Of course not. That is something that needs to be to be uh, made better in the in the next uh, few years, of course. Second, I would like to check the reassessment of the economic assistance instrument and encouragement of local authorities to apply for support from the social fund. Then again, one year later, it looks like it has already been done, but pardon my view, but I think there are some doubts about it. The European uh, reform program is just uh, giving concerns to finalize the evaluation of the mechanism for benefits from economic assistance and so on. I would suggest, suggest the same method for, uh, for Northern Macedonia, for example. So uh, when we look at their joint conclusions of the European reform report on Northern Macedonia, we have quite the same bullets. Let's check uh, number five, for example. 
Let me just uh, take a quick view. So, uh, implementation of a list of a mapped, of mapped parafiscal char chair charges, identification of those to be abolished, reformed, or streamlined. Continue the digitization of public services for businesses and citizens. Of course, we should enter the future, digitize the whole nation. Why not? Even though it's a bit underdeveloped and the implementation of the strategy for brightening up the grey economy. As you can see, next year in North Macedonia, uh, there are, of course, the same thing, the same thing, already prepared list of mapped parafiscal charges to be used for evaluation, and then again, of course, how to digitize the society, how to fight the grey economy. Nothing new, nothing new, absolutely nothing new. So uh, let's let's go to Serbia. Serbia has perhaps the same problems as the other Western Balkan countries, even though its economy has a real uh, really strengthened in the last years. Uh, perhaps this is the right moment to say that perhaps all of the countries in the Western Balkans they have the same economic problems. They need to reform. They need to to reform towards uh, towards the European values, to European acquis communautaire, to European laws, to European economic programs. That's the way of the soft power of the European Union to, to move forward. So when we speak about Serbia, their uh, joint conclusions in the 2021 uh, European Reform Program report claims that to reduce the shadow economy, uh, they should increase their VAT collection, for example, or improve the tax control process. One year later, on the joint conclusions in the 2022 European Reform Report on Serbia, it's quite the same. In order to reduce the grey economy, this time it's grey economy, it's not shadow economy, a bit funny, you know. Uh, they need to strengthen once again the collection of that and to improve the tax control processes. It's actually the same, which means two things. Uh, two things. Not only that the country hasn't moved uh, really forward, but perhaps that the, the reform program isn't quite working. There is a problem in the two sides, not only in Serbian municipalities or Serbian central government. Of course, uh, there is uh, this big European bureaucracy that's kind of not working. Secondly, I would check the development of a long-term uh, energy and climate strategy in accordance with the Green Program for the Western Balkans. Back again in the 2022 European Reform Program of Serbia, it's quite the same to continue the development and adoption of a national long-term energy and climate plan in accordance with the green problem in the a green program in the western balkans and international commitments which means that uh, there hasn't been a kind of a big difference for the for the for 12 months in serbia if you ask the european reform program if you ask me they have done their best but frankly uh, in the next 5 or 10 years there wouldn't be actual uh, big kind of change or reform, which questions the whole uh, legitimacy of those those reform programs and those joint conclusions on the report. So let's also check Montenegro, uh, this beautiful country, small beautiful country. Uh, it's kind of interesting that Montenegro failed to submit its 2021-2023 program to the European Commission. They didn't get the deadline at the end of January 2021. Uh, but anyway, let's check uh, something something bizarre, of course. The adoption of the changes to the law on the budget and fiscal responsibility with the aim of creating an independent body for fiscal supervision. That's a target, a bullet point that should have been done uh, between the 2021 and 2022 report. When we check one year later, it's uh, the same thing, but it just needs to be uh, implemented, you know the same uh, state infrastructure activities with available fiscal space adoption of changes in the budget actually the same thing let's check uh, point number five prioritize the digitization of the public sector and the development of transactional e-government okay sounds good perhaps it work or it doesn't one year later completing on the study uh, on the shadow economy and short-term effects of the europe now program and they're also saying that uh, they should deal with the grey economy as well as its implementation. Kind of the same thing. They're switching sides. Uh, in the beginning, they called it shadow economy. They're, they're calling it the grey economy. 
what I'm trying to say is the following that uh, if uh, in May 2022 the regular economic and financial dialogue between representatives of the European Union member states, the Western Balkans and Turkey, the European Commission, the European Central Bank, uh, it was held in Brussels, everything should be fine, they should have a common position condemning the Russian aggression in Ukraine, which by the way wasn't included in those economic reports, which kind of changes the whole situation because the world was changing before their eyes and the European Commission wasn't flexible enough, you know, to, to change its report policies about the countries in the Western Balkans, which are geographically close to the conflict in Ukraine, and they are also uh, economically influenced. They have got, they had uh, back in the days, of course, uh, gas dependencies from Russia, for example. They are uh, highly influenced by the whole geopolitical situation. So it's very important to include uh unexpected events in those reports however the european commission is currently a bit bureaucratic it could not do that uh, i would say that uh, it's curious curious that the commission is asking the countries in the western balkans and turkey for uh, european reform programs uh, at new concerning the period 2022 and 2024 which probably lights a red light about the previous reports Perhaps they weren't efficient enough, or perhaps the countries couldn't handle them, or perhaps both. I would say that this, uh, this light, a red light for the critical analyst like me, for example, or like you, that the previous uh, one-year reports have not fulfilled their original concept. And if all the economic programs and recommendations are observed with constructive criticism, and the progress of the countries in some areas, there's, there was some uh, progress, you know, uh, we should applaud the countries from the Western Balkans, they're doing their best. But if their progress has been taken into account, then the essential goal of the dialogue, the European integration of the countries of the region, remains with many question marks because the countries in the Western Balkans, they're doing their best, they are making some efforts, and unfortunately, they're still kind of far from entering the European Union. Unlike, for example, Ukraine, who even uh, which is at war with Russia currently, uh, is one of the best guests in Brussels and are kind of close to entering the European Union after the war. If you ask, of course, for example, Ursula von der Leyen or the other representatives of the European institution. My final conclusion is that uh, European institutions are a bit bureaucratic, they are less flexible, and that their whole annual joint conclusions in the EU economic reform programs is a question if you ask me because sometimes it looks like it doesn't work feel free to contact me if you have any questions i would like to make a discussion with all of you uh, finally i would like to say thank you for your time excuse me if not if my english is not the best hopefully my presentation was okay for you thank you and cheers thanks